Howdy. I have here, sitting on top of this Amiga, another, and it has nothing inside of it. I mean, there's no power supply, there's no, it's just basically the circuit board inside the case. And, let's see, A slash W3, 1, 2, 7, 2, 3, revision, revision 6, PCB assembly 3, 1, 2, 7, 7, 7, 2, 0, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, but the trouble that this one has is, there's the circuit for it, and make it 2,000. The trouble this has is that indeed the battery is still there, and from what I can tell, the battery has leaked. So, uh, the other day I removed the first battery I've ever removed, and uh, the, nothing seemed to be wrong. Mind you, it didn't look like things had leaked. It did not. Um, that was on another Omega 2000, so I'm just getting things to, oh, it's sliding, sliding, no sliding. The power supply is a pretty good thing. Anyway, I have my soldering iron. to try to get my phone inside here somehow. Hey, you know what? It fits kind of in these slot things here. Mind you, it's not tilting down. Where's the battery? Oh, there's the battery. Except the battery is not in view. Well, maybe if I flip the phone around and get it to sit there just so. Well, we have a great view of the PET 2001 there, but not so much the battery that we must get out. Well, this is interesting. One way maybe I can get closer. One way I do this and the battery is not in view. The other way I try and do this and it is but if but it isn't. Let's see. Perhaps that light well, that looks a little better. Anyway, so soldering iron is heating. Now, the next trick will be, can I actually film and not have the, the delicately balanced iPhone fall over? That is the question. And I think the answer as I bump this a little bit, it is probably, no. So, I'm trying to jam it between, there's the things that hold, oh, I bumped that out. the things that hold the cards. I wonder if it's better, because I think I can zoom in. Huh. 
Well, there are things in here that hold the cards in place. And that might be good. Now, how's this whole thing working? Another thing I do not wish to do is to burn my hand. Well, here I have my carefully wrapped solder. I will see if the iron seems to be hot. Ooh! Let there be smoke. Okay. So, now this, this still may be an operation best done from I say this may be a best done from the bottom of the board. I'm just not sure. It went okay the last time. Basically, from what I have seen of this, oh, the iron, come on, cord, is um, on one end of the battery. I guess this is how it is kept from being. Uh, how do I do this? Did I use this iron or did I use the big one? I think I used this iron. On one end of the battery is one little contact thing, which goes into the circuit board. And on the other end, there is a tube. I'm just trying to get this right up tight. And now I'm trying to rock it, and guess what? Nothing is happening. This is discouraging. Um, see, I had my big weller here. I think I still do. I didn't think I used it. Though. I thought this came to life. I guess I could look back at the video. I really don't want to burn myself. damage. Well, that is doing nothing. That is doing nothing. Let me see. I can have any success at the other side of the board. Not really. Maybe I use the other one. It has not been that long ago. One would think I could remember. Okay, so, video number one on removing the battery. I don't think the 40 watt iron does it. Now I'm trying to stop it. Okay, so, where? Because I have a little fellow around here, I don't like to leave my soldering iron around. Especially plugged in. Oh, come on. Oh, wait a second. I know what I did. I stuck it up on top of this here monitor. But now, I can't really get to very well. Oh, I stuck it up there because it was hot. Okay. And, yeah, I left it plugged in. Well, see, I almost, I turned the power bars off, so I don't feel that bad about that. Okay. So now... Hello. I have it focused. 
Okay, so now I am letting my bigger soldering iron heat up so that I might remove this battery which I believe has leaked onto this Omega 2000 board. Usually, these irons heat up pretty quick. Okay. We have smoke. So, and I have it pulled in, that's on the 140 watt setting. So, I'm going to, with great quickness, I believe, at least I'm going to try, get this down on the board. the place that the, this connects to the board and wiggle it out. Alright, what's going on here? It's funny, you know, the first one I did went so well. Alright, I'm holding this one. There is a little wee screwdriver. Once again, I do not want to hurt the circuit board any more than it has been hurt. So, I am hoping seem to be doing it. I'm kind of baffled. Because the first time I did this, and even though I should have done it long ago, it went quite well. What is going on here? Do we have heat? Well, we have some. that solder. It went so well. It went so easy. Right. I'm going around the other side here. And I, this is the side that has two connectors. Oh, that one. Okay, that's moving. Okay, hang on. Maybe I was on the wrong spot on the other side. Oh yeah. Okay. Ooh. Okay, well we're half out. Okay, so now this is likely gonna be warm. And as I remember right at the bottom here right there that's where it should be that it should be oh well I melted something okay well that one didn't see oh well I suppose I could probably tie it up ah the top okay so there is perhaps not the best way to remove the battery from an Amiga 2000. Maybe what I should be doing next time is going from the bottom. Anyway, the battery is out. Okay. Up there, too cool. So, I'll just give this a little tweak.
there. If the Omega 2000 circuit board, after I removed the battery, that probably should have been removed many years ago. And indeed, there seems to be residue. Um, as you, if you watch the other video, you saw I didn't have the easiest time getting this thing out of there, but it did come. So I'm going to have to look carefully at the board and see what's what. But I suppose what I'm going to do now, and uh, it's right. The, the residue field goes, well, quite far, um, like an inch or two in each direction, which ain't good. But anyway, we'll see what happens. What I think I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and snag a power supply and other accessories from an Omega 2000 and plug this in and see what happens. So, there is the circuit board. Onward we go. Okay, so, um, there. So here, yeah, this one did not come out as nice. Here is the little culprit. They do make replacements. I was like, ah, not, oh, not this sort. I think other things. There. Oh, that's still warm. There's the little battery. Do, 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 do. Which I will, of course, throw away. Ah. So. That was easy. Um, now, does this still work? I don't know. But I'm going to set it down here moment and then if I remember correctly and I do not this Amiga which is supposedly a 2500 um, I thought for a second maybe it's Maybe it had a power supply and such that were not secured, and it seems it somewhat does. But you know what? This one has a toaster, which I have not been able to do anything with yet, but I do not wish to hurt anything in here. So, I'm going to try to very gently set that down. There's an Amiga mouse. Okay. So, trying the circuit board itself. It's not very heavy. So around here, I will find an Amiga with a power supply that, if I remember rightly, is any screws back in this. Let's go. Ah. I suppose it would help if I disconnect it from the board. Okay. So this is not the prettiest of things. It's been out in the garage for a while. Okay. So, um, power supply, disk drive, whatever. All I really need to do is gently, carefully, oh, dear God. Yes. Well, the power 
supply kind of jumped at me because it is really not secure. So the places that it would like to sit ever so gently, um, I missed. Okay, well, we'll see. So I have the power connector on. Floppy connector is being there. That's on. Okay. Well, I suppose all we really have to do now is give it some power. It is sitting where it's supposed to. First, always make sure the power switch is in the off position before you ram a power cord into anything. Okay, I'm going to turn that off a second. Do I actually have things as I would like to have them here? I think so. Alright. So, I am not seeing tremendous activity, oh, okay, well the hard drive is flashing, but there's no hard drive controller in there. So, it is not asking for workbench, I do not hear the disk drive sort of doing its chuggy chuggy thing. So tragically, it may be that this leakage has done something bad. this up a bit and move it forward so I can better make sure oh. that I do in fact have this ribbon cable on as it should be and that no pins are excluded okay so, we have power, we have the ribbon cable as it should be, we have double checked. All that there is to double check. I'll try and get this onto there. Good. Power switch is of course on, which we don't want. And without the hard drive, power, which would seem to do absolutely nothing. So what's going on here? Maybe I don't have that in far enough. Maybe the adapter is not in. All right, what's going on here? It seems that nothing is going on here. All right, what's happening? It's funny, all I did 
was disconnect the power from the hard drive that is not hooked up and will do us no good. But now nothing seems to be happening. So. Oh. Alright. So now I've reconnected that. And indeed, nothing seems to be happening. Alright, let me double check. The power supply is not spinning. Oh, or the, sorry, the fan. Let me double check. That's the power thingy. Oh my god, maybe we've blown a fuse or something. Something is not right here. Let me see. Power. We have the power cord. It is deep in. I am your father. Hmm. Well. Something has happened here. Not necessarily good. So, did I blow a fuse on this? I don't think so. I'll turn it off. I'll turn it off. Oh! Well, I will take the power cord out and I'll put it in another socket. And I will give it power. And nothing is happening. Okay, great. Well, I don't smell any smoke this time. Alright, I am going to separate the power supply from everything. So now we have power. Alright, well I'm not going to worry about anything except the power connector. And see if it still comes on. And it does. So, so we have power, and the screen does give a little flash when we, because let's see if the hard drive comes on. Interesting. The immediate answer is, I don't think so. Maybe I do not have that in securely. I will plug in the floppy drive, which, I mean, according to everything here, this will make no difference.
show the screen flashes and nothing happens. And now the hard drive that used to spin is not spinning. <sighs> you know, I have spoken often about sticking to one thing. Oh, it's not going well. which used to spin. Oh, but, oh, something is happening. The hard drive, its lights were flashing. Maybe it has a stiction a problem, but it's okay, because the power LED works. Obviously, something here is not happening, I suppose. But you know what? I'm starting to smell a little something. I wonder what it is. It could be maybe left over from the solder. like to see smoke rise. What I think I will do is I'm going to take the Amiga 520 video adapter out and put this cord directly into the mono output. Look. This will also, of course, way back when, this will let you connect to a television. I think the hard drive is now spinning up. But nothing is happening. So, sadly, the noise. Maybe that was the funny smell I was hearing or smelling. Now, is this going to make any difference? No, not at all. But it's nice to hear. So, even though this evil battery has been removed, it does seem there are issues. Now, were there issues before. Like, did this, was there something else besides the battery thing happening? I don't know. Because I don't know. So, but it does seem that we are not going to get anywhere with this at this moment. So, I will, with great care, take this back. Yeah, I think that hard drive is starting to get, was getting, it was having trouble, maybe with that stiction thing they talk about. It was trying to go, but it wouldn't go. Now, oh, I'm really trying to hurt anything. This down. Uh. Okay, so what do we know? We know we have this here. 
that. It's not booting up at all. It flashes. That's all. Further testing. Required. And it is February 2019. So, when I finally get back to this in like 10 years, <laughs> I'll know. can't be a bad thing. It just cannot. It cannot. So, if 98, 1998. Anyway, if nothing else, perhaps we have some spare chips. So, Plunk this down there. Hey, so here, we have the machine. Oh, I've had the toaster. Now, did I put notes on this? No, of course not. Should I have? Yes, of course. So, if I remember rightly, this one will come up and ask for workbench. And it has the 2.0 ROMs. So, 2.0 Problems. Asks for workbench. Right. So, um, this too was a machine that was in the garage. It's funny, the one that is not working at all was not in the garage, but mind you, the battery. So, and this is the one, actually I don't think I found a good workbench disc yet, but if I put in one of the ones that is 1.3, I think it did boot up, kind of. Sort of, maybe, although it's painful. I don't know. Well, not that one. This one supposedly has an error. I'll try this other one. So, I do have to grab more Amiga things, and of course, more and more cards are gathering here. Which Okay, so this is cranky, which I need to test out and see what is what I do. But as I said before, what I really want to do is get a machine up here that I know is working, that I can test individual bits and pieces. 
and stick cards in and know that if if I stick them in that if I know if it works it works and if it doesn't it doesn't. I have not reached that stage yet. I have not. So, um, so I believe I have two hard drive controllers, two accelerator cards, one, oh, it's up, is it work, it's work, it's three. one machine, two machines, three machines, yeah, three Amiga 2000s, maybe two of them were 2500s. So two of them kind of come up, one of them, no. Nope. So, the hunt continues. If you have any comments about anything, I would love to hear them. Because it has been some time since I have dug into any of these. Some time. It has. And before I come upstairs again with a machine that I am looking for somewhere to put, because I know the one downstairs that's next coming is pretty full and pretty heavy. Oh, so oh, I think. Very gently. Oh, set this down. <sighs> so, well, as always, we continue. Oh, look, here's something little stickers that fall off and such. And I don't know who number 36 is, but the final test of this machine was by number 36, whoever that is. All right, it's funny, you know, years ago, um, when we used to order pizza, it actually had a stamp on the box and it said that it was made by Martha. And it was made by Martha. Um, Alright, well, that's enough for the Amiga 2000 today. We will meet again. So, if you are looking for anything to go with your Amiga 2000, um, this would be the time, because this is the time I'm kind of going through them to see what's what. Anyway, I'm hoping more and more batteries are not there. But we'll see. Bye for now.